Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. 2020 has seen the wrestling world attempt to adapt and change with the increasingly uncertain times, and in some cases this has led to certain wrestlers undergoing one or multiple changes of character. Whether companies always had them planned or jumped on the opportunity of no live audience so they could control how audiences reacted, here are the most shocking gimmick changes of 2020. Before we get into the list, remember to subscribe here and enable notifications for even more content like this and daily wrestling news videos. Akira Tozawa Akira Tozawa has always been portrayed as the plucky underdog since his debut in WWE in the Cruiserweight Classic in 2016, but at Backlash this year, that all changed because WWE management suddenly realised he was Japanese. Tozawa was transformed into a ninja, leading a group of other ninjas, who then fought with the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders and lost. Since then, Tozawa's been chasing the 24-7 title and got eaten by a shark big success. In fact, one of Tozawa's ninjas has gone on to have an even more prominent role than him, Omos. Oh, Omos, you large human being. The 7'3 former basketball player Jordan Omogbahin was by Tozawa's side at Backlash, and in the few weeks that followed became known as Big Ninja, who was, well, a big ninja. He disappeared for a while though and ended up coming back in a new role, this time as the bouncer for Raw Underground. His role was a very complicated one in which he stood in front of the door looking all big and scary. After Raw Underground met its demise, he started accompanying AJ Styles to the ring where he remains as a very big man. Three gimmick changes in one year is quite the achievement though. EC3 after joining NXT in 2018, EC3 continued with the pompous character that he popularised during his time in Impact Wrestling in the few years prior. He didn't really get anywhere in NXT despite being popular, and was called up to the main roster in early 2019, where his gimmick was… nothing, I'm pretty sure. Following his release in April this year, he became a lot more deranged and aggressive, and adopted the catchphrase, control your narrative. He returned at Slammiversary and lost to Moose in a pre-recorded match at Bound for Glory. Carmella one of the most recent gimmick changes on this list is Carmella, who until she returned with a series of video promos in September, hadn't been on TV since April. Upon her comeback, she adopted a more arrogant persona, persona! and proclaimed herself to be untouchable, as well as dyeing her hair even more blonde before launching a series of attacks on Sasha Banks to try and get herself a title shot, which she did on SmackDown. Karrion Cross and Scarlet Despite both being in Impact at the same time and being a real-life couple, Karrion Cross, formerly Killer Cross, and Scarlet were never featured on screen together, which, if their time in NXT is anything to go by, was a bit of a missed opportunity. Following a series of dark TikTok vignettes, the noise a clock makes, not the app, Cross and Scarlet debuted with an apocalyptic vibe, complete with smoke, fire, and Scarlet as Cross's harbinger of doom. The entrance alone firmly placed Cross at the top of the card, and just seven matches later, he won the NXT Championship from Keith Lee. Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae Another real-life NXT couple that rose to prominence in 2020 was Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae, who made sure everyone knew about their Gargano way. Gargano turned heel in February at TakeOver Portland by costing his former tag team partner Tommaso Ciampa an NXT title match, and LeRae was soon to follow when she helped her husband beat Ciampa in a match in April. After turning heel, they started filming video promos in their home, which were rather silly, but people seemed to find them entertaining. The annoying nature of the promo suited their new entitled attitudes, and soon enough other members of the roster, namely Indy Hartwell and Austin Theory, bought into it and joined forces with the couple in search of success. Evil Although New Japan had to be put on hold for several months due to the COVID-19 pandemic, EVIL had quite the eventful year. In the New Japan Cup tournament, EVIL shockingly beat Kazuchika Okada in the final, joining Bullet Club in the process, and then winning the IWGP Heavyweight and Intercontinental Championships the night after at Dominion from Tetsuya Naito with his new aggressive persona. persona! While it didn't exactly get over with the fans, the turn itself and subsequent character change was definitely one of the most shocking moments of the wrestling year. Legado del Fantasma 
Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wilde had both been floating around the roster not really doing much, until they were both mysteriously attacked and kidnapped earlier this year. We still don't really know what happened, but it seems they may have been indoctrinated by Escobar, which, if that's the case, was a bit mean of him, really. After winning the NXT Cruiserweight Championship in May, Escobar, previously known as El Hijo del Fantasma, unmasked and flanked by Mendoza and Wilde, formed Legado del Fantasma, a group that aims to restore prestige to Lucha Libre. Ever since then, Escobar has reigned as champion over the Cruiserweights, dominating the division across both NXT and 205 Live. The Hurt Business Bobby Lashley had a WWE run to forget ever since his comeback in 2018, and with the way 2020 started, it was looking like that was going to continue. But MVP turned out to be the... Well, the MVP. He returned for what seemed like was going to be a one-off at the Royal Rumble in January, but he ended up signing full-time, and his first course of action was saving Lashley. The Almighty ended up getting divorced from Lana just a few months after their marriage in late 2019. I can't believe that's a real sentence. And with MVP in his corner, started being taken seriously once more. Soon enough, the pair had also recruited Shelton Benjamin and forever babyface Cedric Alexander, turning him heel and forming The Hurt Business, a quartet of suit-wearing suave ass kickers who've been a consummate highlight of 2020. Brody Lee Formerly Luke Harper in WWE, Lee was revealed as the Exalted One of the Dark Order in March, and after months of being considered not much more than a group of jobbers, the Dark Order started being taken seriously with him at the helm, and had even resulted in a run with the TNT title. If you watched Lee throughout his time in WWE, you may not have even realised he had what it takes to portray an Exalted One style character, but that explains why he was so keen to get out of there. The Exalted One is a complete antithesis of the Luke Harper character in WWE, and it's been a joy to watch. Miro. Another WWE release that joined AEW, the former Rusev was a Russian hero, or a Bulgarian brute, and definitely wasn't at the helm of Rusev Day and got over as a babyface. Nope, that didn't happen. When he showed up in AEW in September, Miro was introduced as the best man for Kip Sabian ahead of his upcoming marriage to Penelope Ford, and the two shared their love of gaming on TV, something he'd never even come close to doing in WWE. A lot of fans have actually been fairly critical because they were so used to seeing him being portrayed as nothing more than a beast, but the version of him we get in AEW is much more like he actually is in real life. Seth Rollins Okay, technically, Rollins transforming into the Monday Night Messiah was in December 2019, but give us this one. Despite previously being one of the fan's most popular stars, Rollins had started getting in everyone's bad books with his controversial Twitter activity, and soon enough, the fans legitimately began turning on him. Thank you, Fiend. He took that opportunity to launch his new Messiah persona. <laughs> proclaiming that he knows best and everyone should follow his lead. In January, Rollins invited Murphy into his following, and they went on to become Raw Tag Team Champions a month later. With Murphy by his side, as well as Austin Theory briefly, they proved to be a formidable force. Rollins' Messiah character, despite feuding with Rey Mysterio for about 17 years this year, has actually been one of the highlights of the year, putting on great matches with the likes of Drew McIntyre and Kevin Owens. Will Ospreay Despite possibly being the most popular wrestler in the world outside of WWE and AEW, Osprey enlisted the help of his girlfriend B Priestley and returning great O'Khan to beat Kazuchika Okada in the G1 Climax, thus turning heel and leaving chaos. Since then, he's been wearing suits, sipping champagne, and generally being a bit of a prick. The start of 2020 marked his jump to the heavyweight division, and although the COVID-19 pandemic put a halt to it at first, he could be on the path towards New Japan's top prize with some sneaky tricks under his sleeve. Alexa Bliss Alexa Bliss started the year teaming with Nikki Cross, even holding the Women's Tag Team Championships going into WrestleMania 36. But at the swamp fight between Bray Wyatt and Braun Strowman, Alexa was revealed as Sister Abigail. Sort of. I'm not exactly sure how much of that match was real or not. This developed further and further, until she completely changed her character, revealing two sides of herself much like The Fiend. She can go from being a perky, bubbly, and friendly person, to being possessed by The Fiend and spewing weird red goo out of her mouth seamlessly. Retribution 
What hasn't been said about Retribution already? In one of the biggest missteps of the year, WWE took NXT talent Dominic Dijakovic, Dio Madden, Shane Thorne, Mia Yim, and Mercedes Martinez and rebranded them as T-Bar, Mace, Slapjack, Reckoning, and Retaliation. They caused mild chaos with their new masks and attitudes and then promptly lost every week, even when their leader was revealed to be Mustafa Ali. This one stings. To take someone like Dominic Dijakovic, who in the same year was tearing the house down against Keith Lee at TakeOver Portland and make him a jobber called T-Bar, that hurts, man. This was a shocking gimmick change for all of them. Shocking in the absolute worst way. Kenny Omega. Most gimmick changes are marked by one specific moment, but Kenny Omega saw a gradual change throughout the year of 2020, culminating with him winning the AEW World title thanks to the help of Impact executive Don Callis. 2020 got off to a hot start for Omega, who after forming a tag team with fellow elite member Hangman Page, won the World Tag Team Championship from SCU on the Jericho Cruise. Their run as a team wasn't all smooth sailing though. For months there'd been miscommunications and accidental strikes to each other, which resulted in Page becoming a blubbering alcoholic, but still they managed to remain champions for an impressive 228 days. But when the duo lost the championship, Omega made it very clear that he wanted to return to the singles division, despite Paige wanting to continue as a team. The ultimate turn came on the Winter Is Coming edition of Dynamite, where he won the world title from Moxley thanks to a pesky interference from Don Callis, and would go on to appear on Impact TV the following week. Roman Reigns there's arguably not been a more well-received overhaul in 2020 than Roman Reigns, and the one criticism fans have had is what took so long. After taking time away from the company from before WrestleMania, Reigns returned at SummerSlam, and one week later captured the Universal title. Ugh, typical WWE, right? Wrong. In complete contrast to the suffering succotash reigns of the past few years, he had adopted a much more aggressive attitude and aligned with Paul Heyman on the SmackDown prior. After winning the title and becoming the very biggest dog on SmackDown and starting to wrestle shirtless, he turned his attention to his own family. Declaring himself the tribal chief and head of the table, he embarked on a mission to get his cousin Jay Uso to back him up. Uso was resistant at first, but after several beatings, including two on pay-per-view, he eventually gave in and accepted Reigns as his leader. This has been the most well-told story in WWE of 2020, and the most refreshing character change from someone who was actively hated by a portion of WWE's fanbase to becoming one of the most beloved and the highlight of each week of SmackDown. So that was our list of the most shocking gimmick changes of 2020. Are there any that we missed? Let us know in the comments and press the videos on screen to catch up with even more videos. Videos. And don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications to know first when new videos go live. I've been Chopper Pequenel. Jam that jam.